In the previous section, we set up Docker in Vagrant VM, compared the containers with virtual machines, and took a look at how Docker and containers work. In this section, we are going to familiarize ourselves with basic Docker commands and workflow. Since the real meat of Docker is running commands inside containers, that's where we'll be starting. In this video, we'll be using these commands, primarily focusing on Docker run. Containers are ultimately about running a process. Docker provides many ways to run commands in containers, so we'll explore three basic ways in which you can run commands. Running commands in the foreground. Running interactive commands in the foreground. Running long-running commands in the background. First, let's simply run the is command in a container to see what happens. We'll use the standard Ubuntu container image for all these examples. What you should see is a listing of the root directory inside the container. After this is run, the container has stopped since the process has ended. We can see the container is still around by using docker ps-a. This will show us all the containers around, even those that aren't running. Since we don't want to do anything with this container now that it's finished, we should remove it using docker rm. In another basic run example, we'll ping Google. This time, we'll run with the minus minus rm to automatically remove it when it's done. The ping is not your system ping. It's the ping inside the container, isolated from your host system. Running long-running commands like this can be closed the same way it would normally outside of Docker with Control c Here let's try to run the Vim text editor. As you can see, it can't find Vim in this container. We'll have to install it with apt-get. It aborted. Why? It wanted confirmation input from us, but we were not running the command interactively. So let's do that next. Interactive commands are generally run with two options. Minus I, which is interactive, though technically it means it won't close standard in. Then we use minus T, which emulates a text terminal. This way, the command operates more like it would normally in your terminal. For example, if we wanted to run bash in our container, we'd use these options. Now when we run our apt get command, it takes our confirmation input. But as you might realize, this command is somewhat pointless if our container is removed after it finishes installing Vim. We'll address this in the next video, but for now, we can run a more complex command that will install Vim and then run it. This runs bash in the container with a compound command. The ambassand ambassand operator wouldn't work otherwise, since it would be interpreted by our host shell environment. After we exit the program, we also exit the container, and the container gets cleaned up. Lastly, we're going to run a command in the background. You can actually do this with any command, as it just means we won't be attaching to the process, but this is frequently done for daemon processes that run a server. This last example is a fairly complicated compound command, since we're going to install setup and run the open SSH server. We're also using the port mapping option since we want to connect to the SSH server. Unlike when running in the foreground, running in detached mode returns the container ID. We can then use this in other commands to interact with the container. For example, to see the output so far, we can use docker logs. But now, let's try connecting to our containerized SSH server.
we just SSH'd into our container. We can run commands here as if we ran bash in the foreground like before. Any commands here will be sub-processes of our containerized command and will also be isolated in the container. Since our command is running indefinitely in detached mode, we have to explicitly stop it. We're going to use docker kill to do this, since our command is not one that will close cleanly with docker stop. Lastly, we'll have to manually clean it up. In this video, we learned how to run commands using docker run, as well as some supporting commands. We saw how to run basic foreground commands, interactive commands with a pseudo terminal, and even how to run a daemon process in the background. These workflows are core foundation of using Docker. In the next video, we'll introduce a new set of commands that are used for managing your containers.